<laughs> Very nice guys. Let's tickle him. Yes guys! Yes! Yes guys! Hello guys, today we're making a red bloodworm out of glass beads. The hook I have on the vise, it's Hanak jig hook in size 10. I have 3.3 mil tungsten bead and these glass beads, they're 2 mil in diameter. This is a red thread in 8 odd. About 6 turns or so. Bring it back to the bead. And this is a spool of your normal red sewn thread. I'm using this thread to tie bigger flies. And what I've done, I cut a cut a bit of it off. Cut it in half. Come in under the thread. Pull it up. And then tie it down with touch and turns. Here we go. And then wind back to the bead. And now we're going to cut it short. And now guys, what we have here, a blood worm, they do have like a little, a little legs at the back. So that's going to represent the legs, four strands of red sewn thread. And also this here at the back, the thread, it won't allow the beads to slide off. Let's build up a little dam at the back and we'll be ready to go. Now from here, straight into the whip finish. Few coats of varnish guys. Wow guys, that's one of the fastest ties that I made. I love how the glass beads, they just form the body quite nicely. It's kind of a see-through, beads are catching reflection of the light, so underwater it's going to look tempting for the fish. The only thing I'm worried about is Will I be able to see this nymph move in the water? Because sometimes it's important to see your lure, your nymph. So that way you can judge if the fish is following it or if they're trying to bite. Also to avoid snags. But let's see. We have to try it out. Blood worms are ready. Let's check size and weight. Together with the tail, it's pushing 1.5 centimeters. 0 0.4 grams. Let's put them on the box and take them out fishing. I think I will put them next to the midge bloodworm. Okay guys, we are on the canal again. <laughs> it's summer. The weeds are growing, the water is getting warm, really warm, and hopefully the coarse fish is going to be active. And to fool the coarse fish today, I have this tiny red blood worm that, that I made with beads. It's really small and heavy, so hopefully I can cast at a good distance and then fool some, fool some coarse fish.
came out out of nowhere the old perch first fish of the day guys let's tickle him yeah come on buddy go home this is makeshift lures and I approve this glass bead bloodworm That's not the fish I want guys, there was much bigger bream and rod going after the lure. Guys, something crazy is happening. Every cast I make, nearly every cast, a big rod or a big bream comes out, circles around the nymph and then goes back. I might have to change my retrieve or change the color of the nymph or a pattern. Here we go guys. Hopefully next one will be a road. I think it's time to retie. This one is a great pattern, but the problem with it, I can't see. I can't see it working in the water. Okay, guys, I have changed the lure to our good old faithful olive mayfly nymph. It's not necessarily better for the fish, but it's better for me because it's a little bit heavier, and I'd be able to see it in the water better because it's it's different color. So I can really see if the fish is following it, and then change the re retrieve accordingly making a bite Oh no! <laughs> Here we go. Yes, guys. Yes. Seems like a. Oh, it is a road. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it, guys. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> she took it so well. Oh my god, I have to take a picture of this. Okay. I'm gonna toss it. Hopefully, it won't hurt her too much. There you go. <laughs> How did that happen, guys? I didn't even see that perch bite. Road and then the perch, not too bad. There is the perch guys, 
couldn't resist it. Took it pretty deep. My god. That was a perch guys. Not a bad size. How am I going to land them? I'm not sure. That's not bad you guys. Look at this bad boy. Un under the bridge. <laughs> Very nice guys. <laughs> Look at that. Look at these guys, that's a mushroom. Very interesting. <laughs> Look at this swan feathers, guys. He was cleaning him himself here. And look at that one. Could I perhaps be able to make a float out of this? Let me see. Let me take a few. Here we go guys, I will try to make a float out of this bottom part. <laughs> Small one guys. Look at that canal, perch, and a swan. There was a dragonfly chasing my chasing my nymph. Yes, guys! Yes! Uh, <laughs> my god! It happened! I saw it bite twice! Let me get the net! Hopefully we can land them! It's a rod and a bream! Wow, look at that. Let me take a quick picture. Look at that guys. Small bream or hybrid. I'm not sure what it is. She came out right under the that corner where there's weeds and rubbish. Look how slimy he made the lion. <laughs> Oh, 
behind you, I guess, one. <laughs> Here we go. There you go guys, that's the kind of perch I've been expecting from under the bridge. Lovely. <laughs> now guys, I don't know if you can see it, I have been noticing this occurrence for a few years now. This is a leech. It seems that it's crawling this way. So it's crawling away from the canal. Canal is there, there's the field. And the leech guys, it's crawling this way, that's amazing. Okay guys, day is coming to an end. I think it's time for me to finish up. The olive nymph did great once again. I had to change it from the, from the red blood worm to this so I could sit in the water and see the fallows and the takes. Caught a rod, caught a baby bream, caught perch of course. Did some lovely fishing under the bridge. Uh, Today, very peculiar, peculiar, at the start of the session, I saw some massive, massive bream and massive rod following my blood worm. But because I couldn't see it, I couldn't see whether they were biting it or not. I need to change something, maybe the size of the knee of the color, or maybe I need to change the retrieve. Anyhow, it's up to me to figure out. Until next time, guys.